Tom here, back with another episode of the Mini Sculpting Super Show. Today, I want to teach you how to sculpt shields. I love sculpting shields. They're one of the most commonly seen pieces of medieval like defensive equipment. But they're also extremely versatile in the fact of, of the kind of textures. You can do smooth shields, you can do wood grain shields, you can do metal shields, all, all sorts of stuff. You can add rivets. And so they're, they're actually really interesting to sculpt, but relatively easy. And if you use them right and apply them to the figure, you can actually save yourself a lot of sculpting time by covering up details if you're doing the figure all in one piece. All right, let's get on to the tutorial. The Mini Sculpting Super Show is powered in part by Sculptomo Toys. See everything they have to offer at SculptomoToys.com. Now all you need to sculpt a shield is a nice flat surface where you can spread the putty on and start forming the general shape. But I like to use these shield forms and I've got two types I'm going to show you in this video. This first one is um, con this, uh, it's a typical convex sphere shape and this is great for making round shields. Um, because it's nice and consistent even all the way around. Now in this particular demo, the shield that I was making uh, was made out of wood planks, but I but I, I had in mind that it was probably maybe like a barrel. So even though it's not gonna be perfectly round, you'll see how I end up cutting it with into this uh, a slightly more rounded square shape. So what I did there first is I, I taken a little bit of petroleum jelly and wiped it onto the, the shield form and you'll want to do this if you, you can if you're going to sculpt flat you can usually sculpt on like a plastic bag um, like a ziploc or whatnot and and your putty and everything will pop right off once it's cured but on something that's more rigid like this you need to put down a little bit of lubrication and so that's why I do that just to make it you don't want to put too much because if you do it'll be hard to get the material to stick but you just do a little bit and it'll be just enough to help make it a little easier to pop off in the end. So what I've done here is I spread out the putty, got a nice even shape going for that, and you really want to watch the thickness. So when you first press the putty on, you want to kind of do it as a ball and then press it down that way, and that'll keep it from building up a lot of air bubbles underneath. But pretty soon after getting that initial flat spread of material, you want to trim off some of the excess, and that's because as you're as you're pressing and, and flattening the putty out, you can sometimes get some inconsistencies in the thicknesses, and you want to watch out for that. So just go ahead and uh, do that, trim it down. I should say, uh, as I do with all almost all of my equipment that I sculpt off of a miniature, I'm using a mix of green stuff and Aves Epoxy Sculpt, about 50-50. You can do them a little less, a little more, whatever your taste is particularly, but it'll react pretty much the same. Now you see here, I've started to, I had to trim off a little bit of extra after I started to put in the kind of shape of the boards. I held this up to my miniature and realized it was a little too large. That's something you need to do with the shield. Either have a ruler ahead of time and know the exact size you need to make it, the diameter, or the width and make sure you check that because you can end up sculpting a lot of really nice detail and uh, end up having it be completely the wrong size. So what I'm doing here is I've cut in some shapes with with my scalpel or my, my X-Acto blade to create kind of like the, the look of the boards. Now with putty, unless you cut it at the right time, and even if you do cut it at the right time, it'll tend to want to round a little bit when you're pressing in. So I've what I went in, I went in with a color shaper and started to smooth and flatten out the board a little bit. And that was just to help make that initial cut a little more crisp because these are supposed to be wooden boards. So they would have a nice uh, solid edge and not be soft and rounded. So when you're doing boards, you can keep it a board type detail for a shield. You can keep it all nice and consistent. These were some of the shields that I made for my goblins, and so I wanted them to be very inconsistent, like they found a hunk of a barrel and just ripped off some of the boards or, or pieces or, or reused them even. And so, you know, these would be old and rotted. And when you're doing this final trimming it, and you're working in putty, it can be very helpful to let 
the putty set up. You know, you want to work the putty down to its to the thickness you need for the shield when it's nice and soft. But after you've kind of got those general rough shape in and some of the details, it's better to let the putty cure up a little bit. It'll just help some of those larger shapes hold their form better. All right, so that's looking pretty good. And this is after I probably let it sit maybe 15 minutes. And um, I'm just going back in with a, with a probe, a needle tool or a stylus and just adding a little bit of a subtle wood texture on the on the surface. And again, you really want to make sure the, the putty set up a decent amount. Not entirely, obviously you need it to still be able to be manipulated, but if you if you wait for a little while, it'll be it'll you won't end up destroying kind of the general form you've got going on. And you know, don't be afraid to kind of clean things up touch things up, or add in a little deeper cuts if you need it afterwards. Now this shield form is based on a cylinder, and this is great for most kind of shields you would see um, from knightly orders and things like that. You know, it's, you're gonna have it just rounding gently from left to right. And for this one, this is a very similar shield to what I did before, but you'll be able to see that it won't round top to bottom. It's just going from one side to the other. And everything else across is, is very consistent. So you can use your finger to spread it out. You know, make sure you put down the petroleum jelly to make sure it won't stick to your shield form. I should say when this is all done and cured, you want to make sure it's nice and cured. Leave it a good long time or put it in your putty oven to help it everything set up. Uh, you need to very carefully use your scalpel or X-Acto blade to kind of pry the shield off of the shield form. It won't just instantly pop off. You need to kind of press the blade underneath a little bit just to start getting it off of the metal. But once you do that, it comes off fairly easily. But do be careful. You don't want to cut yourself. So I'm doing the same thing I did in the last one. You know, just cutting in the uh, sections of the different boards that'll be on the shield and then taking my clay shaper to gently tap and press it to, to make them, them flatten out so they don't look like rounded pieces of wood. You want these to be, at least in this case, flat. And you, this is the same thing you would do if you were making a, 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 a heater shield or, or a kite shield or something like that. You would you know, form it up and as you trim things off, you'd probably have to go back in over it and clean up those edges a little bit. I probably use this shield form for like 75% of the shields I do and I guess it's just because it's the style that I typically am going for. Um, but, and with this one, you really want to typically use your X-Acto blade to kind of cut more straight lines and, and the arcs across. But when you're using the, if you use the other type of shield form where it's concave, vex, vex, I said it right the first time and I forgot. Um, or if you're working flat and you want to make a round shield, don't try and, and cut it perfectly round, you know, use a, uh, what I like to use is these these larger brass tubes that you can buy at any hobby store, you know, the same place you would get little brass rods for making weapon handles and things like that. So I get these just various diameters from those and, and, I use, and I'll, I'll spread the putty flat, whether it's on the, the convex shield form or, or flat surface, and you just press it down and you stamp it. And you can do that with anything if you happen to have a shape that's just the right size and and whatnot uh, you can use that you could even use that if you if you were doing like a teardrop shield you could you could start at least or at least mark the shape of the rounded top first and then cut down the the uh, the pointed end it helps you get a lot more crispness and the right kind of detail that you're going for when you use methods like that Now I'm just working in the wood grain, 
Just like before on the last shield. And I decided to try it a little different this time. I was using the X-Acto Blade to kind of make some more defined straight um, angles. And just popping in a little detail to make the shield look like it has a bit of wear. And just keep doing this until you've gotten all the details you need to get into the shield before the putty cures. Once you've left the shield to completely dry, you can start adding on little details. In this case, I'm just getting a little bit of Procreate putty, and I'm going to start adding on like these, these bands to kind of give the sense uh, of something that's actually holding these wooden boards together. You know, um, Bobby Jackson used to always glue, joke that that a lot of miniatures, uh, their equipment and whatnot, is held together by wizard's glue. It's just this invisible magic glue that can have anything, you know, stay together or, or be held in place on a belt, even though there's no perceivable way that it should be able to happen. So, you know, you can do, you can add on a, a decorative emblem to the shield, shield bosses, rims. Or if you, if this shield were to be seen from the other side, you would actually want to pop this off, turn the shield over. I like to stick it onto some sticky tack, and you can actually spread a little putty in there and actually sculpt the wood grain on the other side. So, but little things like this will really help finish off your shield, especially if it's more of a flat, plain looking uh, shield and you haven't done something like cut wood grain into it or, or put, um, put a rim or, or some other detail that's you know you were able to do while you're working the initial sculpt and here you can see the completed shield on one of my goblin warriors uh, if you'd like to pick up some of these shield forms for yourself you can visit my website at thetommason.com and pick them up there as long with, along with uh, any of my miniatures that I've sculpted. It really helps support me and the show. Or if you'd like to learn more about sculpting and join the community, you can sign up for Patreon and help support the show that way. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, keep sculpting. <laughs>